Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Cornelius presents Fear of Change, filmed on the 28th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Alrighty, let's get going. So AJ's introduced you about what I'm going to talk about is the fear of change. And I'm going to draw a little diagram first to get us going, so just bear with me for a minute. I'll just put those things up for you to read while I get this little diagram going. So I've got a little road, I'll draw a little road here. One there, here, a little diminishing point there. This is a representation of the crossroads in our life. We often come to this crossroad, there's two different directions you can take. You can end up taking the road that says, goes towards fear, or we can take the road towards truth. The road, to, when we ever make a decision in fear, it's always going to be an addictive feeling. We're always looking for an addiction. So that we'll go down this road, there's a road that always has addictions involved. Whenever we're going to go down this road, the only result down the end of this road is always pain, suffering, and degradation of our soul. If we make a different choice and get in this road of truth, there's some other results. We end up getting, instead of getting out, if we come to this point, I'll just draw a little picture here too, actually. Right here is where we're making the choice. You know, we are going to be on the same road as what the world does. We're going to keep taking this direction all the time. We're always going to we have a difficult emotion coming up in this area in our life. We're going to have to make a choice what we're going to do with that emotion. Are we going to act in fear and just try and run away from it as quick as possible? If we do that, we're always going to end up, end up, end up in addictions. Not just if, always. We always will end up looking for an addiction to give us a good feeling. So try and avoid this uncomfortable feeling. Every time we're going to go down that road, it's always going to end in pain and suffering and degradation to our soul. This is where the world goes these days. It's pretty full on. That's why there is so much pain and suffering in the world. And it's the road we're choosing. We're part of this world. And we've got to do something about that. <laughs> we end up being quite resistive at this area too. We don't want any of our comfort zones challenged. So do you have any idea what our comfort zones are? Does anybody know what a comfort zone is? Yes, Jane? Jane, um, where the comfort zone is like where you're feeling safe and secure. Emotionally. Yeah, yeah. you feel it, but it could be, maybe it's not really a comfort zone. In yeah, we want to feel, try and feel comfortable. Yeah. Anybody else? You know what an emotional comfort zone is? Or what would you call an emotional comfort zone? Yeah, just, we'll just go here, your name. Um, I'm Sherry. Um, just familiarity, feeling of familiarity, even if it's not safe. So, you, so when you're familiar with things, you quite feel sure, and you know nothing's going to come at you from some sort of angle. You know what's going on in life. Yeah. Yeah. Even, but don't sometimes people like someone who's been bashed, bashed up or something by the father, then chooses, you know, a husband who bashes them. Is that a comfort zone as well? How do you mean? Um, just repeating your old emotional patterns, even if they're negative. You're usually looking for ones to try and avoid our fears, like you're trying to avoid the, another beat up or something like that. You'll find a man that you can feel more powerful over generally in another relationship. So you're more comfortable, then you're in control. It's all about control. It's all about trying to control our fear or control our uncomfortable emotions that start arising we could choose to go and deal with it in truth, sort of like that. We're, no, this way, we're off. 
or sorry, at the end of the addiction road because you want to try and get a, that feeling abated as soon as possible. So we end up going looking for an addiction to make it feel good so we can get away from that bad feeling. Yes? It's Julie. Um, Connie, I go into numbness. I'm just completely numb out and I, so I can't feel the fear. That's what people do, so one of the way we try and get away from our feelings. And then I think, oh great, I'm okay. So I've used it as such a tool in my life, um, the numbing out, that I often can't even feel the fear anymore. That's the whole point of it, isn't it? Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It's an addiction. Yeah. It's an addiction. Yeah. The numbing is an addiction. Yeah. So do we even notice our comfort zones? Are we even aware that we have them? Quite often not, because we're shut down to our own feelings. We're not even aware of hardly anything. When we shut down to our emotional feelings, we're shut down to even what we're creating. So we don't even know we've created a comfort zone until someone comes along and challenges my comfort zone. What's it like then? Do we notice we have a comfort zone then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We know it because they start getting all like pretty antsy at them, pretty angry at them as well. In fact, some it can get to a point where we actually want to kill someone to try and avoid them touching our comfort zone, pressing our buttons, as we call it. And that's how war start. So why have we created all this comfort? Any idea? Our uh, name's Thalia, and usually to avoid our own pain. Because we want to feel... We want, always want to feel good. Yeah. Yeah, we, we don't want to feel, you know, bad. anything bad. No. <laughs> no. So it's always geared around trying to feel good, isn't it? And we trust this system, we believe this system of addictions is the way it's going to make us feel good. We're born into a world that tells us that that's the way it works. We've come to believe that, so we keep, we keep on trying it, keep on trying it, keep on trying it. How does it feel? Does it feel good? <laughs> don't see anybody really happy or smiley, so I'm going to say that's a no. <laughs> we have to understand that these come from a choice in our soul here. There's feelings in our soul, the hurts we have, that we don't want to feel. We're very resistant to feeling these feelings. And all we want is a quick fix. We want an instant fix to feel good again. As soon as something starts rising, come down this road, Uncomfortable emotion comes along <gasps> and run off to an addiction straight away. That's what we end up doing. And we become used to that system, believe that's the way it's going to make us feel better. That's the way my life's going to feel okay. That's the way I'm going to feel in control. That's the way I'm going to feel safe. Unfortunately, it don't work. <laughs> so how many of you guys here are afraid of change? Where's all the hands? Like, everybody. <laughs> Open two up. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be honest about it. So we kind of make a different choice at this intersection too. We, we've been so used to doing this choice, hanging a lefty, that's left, yeah, or, and going down the addiction road. We don't want to even see that this is causing this in our life, our pain, suffering, and degradation. Or even our body will tell us it's causing degradation. We can't even, let alone what's happening to our soul, because the body's the last part that's going to show what's happening. But we, have, we can make a different choice. We can choose to actually want to feel an emotion. I'll just write a bit more about that too. So in this row here, we're going to fear, straight away trying to get an uncomfortable feeling met by an addiction. No matter what it is, any addiction will do as long as it makes us feel better and takes us away from that uncomfortable emotion. We're going to, we're going to try and start to feel the emotion because we want to know the truth of the emotion. We want to know the truth of what's causing the uncomfortable feeling inside of me all the time. Every time I go into life, this is uncomfortable feeling comes up. So I want to know what's going on now. So when I start wanting to know what's going on, I can start including God to help me. I can get God's love to assist me in that change. God's love is a beautiful feeling. Way better than any addiction I've ever experienced on earth. 
way better. Incomparable. Whenever we choose God's love, the results are going to be joy, happiness, and eternal growth. So that's our different choice. We've got a lot there. So if we really want true change, this, this direction here doesn't create any change. It's circular. It keeps on coming back on itself. When we get an addiction met, feels good for a moment, then slides downhill pretty quickly and we're back to where we started again. Feel crap again, look for another addiction, slides back downhill once the first one starts dying off again. It's not lasting. But if you want true change, we're going to have to make a different choice towards truth. We want to know the truth of the pain that's happening inside of ourselves, the discomfort that's happening inside of ourselves. And God's going to be able to show us that. So it might be time we start doing a righty. Oh, see if I'm driving down the road that way, here, yeah, righty. Yeah, so doing the old lefty. Gary? Yeah, Gary. Um, I was like, after, after we get like the, the intellectual knowledge, like I'm going to turn right and I'm going to get God's love and truth and joy, that, like that we have to actually physically feel the fear and confront the fear and yes and, not intellectually done yeah, it's emotionally yeah. always going to be emotionally god always yeah. deals only with the, our emotions only our intellect yeah so like the stepping stone to get to the joy happiness and truth would be to actually confront that awful feeling inside of us and 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 like be with it like, yeah have to let need it to, we'll go into it a bit further as we go through the talk but to let it ramp up let it come up fully, fully feeling the feeling, not just a little bit and then run away from it again, back to an addiction. So let it overwhelm us, the feeling. It's in that place where we become real, where we become connected with the feeling. When we become real, God can deal with our, us in that state. God can't deal with our facade just trying to pretend it's not there and trying to intellectually run away with it. Yeah, you know, just like saying to God, I'm afraid. You know, if just, you, you yeah, know, yeah, that's fine yeah. if you're feeling the feeling of afraid rather than saying, I'm afraid. You need to actually be, feel, be feeling it. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Okay. So, how hey, you guys feel like doing an experiment on fear? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> so, we asked that before, didn't we? Do you feel afraid of change? Let's try that again. Do we feel afraid of change? Oh, that's better. Now we're on. <laughs> Alrighty. So, let's see. What I'm going to get you to do. <laughs> just get you to all stand. Oh, hang on a second, just before I'll explain it first. It's just stand up and then go and change a seat in a completely different location than where you sat down today. Because a lot of times we look for a little comfort zone, a little spot right next to the heater here. Oh, I'm set for the day. Up the back, no way. I don't have to get involved in it. So if you sat down the back, like come at the front, if you sat sort of on this side, maybe go that side. If you sat next to someone you know, feels nice and comfortable with someone you know, go sit with someone you don't know. And if you're in with couples, just stay together if you like, dip, move together. And okay, give that a shot and just see how you feel about having to move around. Now stand up and move back. No, just joking. <laughs> so, 
I've got someone's diary here. They left it somewhere. Does it feel uncomfortable if I start reading it to everybody? Of course it will. <laughs> I won't do that. <laughs> so, how would that feel for you guys? It's pretty easy today. It's nice and warm. Like last week, it wasn't so good. People had their nice comfy blankets set out and everything. <laughs> nice warm spot near the heater. Yeah, just so used to sitting in, or not any, just as just a t tiny little experiment we did here. There's hardly any unsettling feeling probably in that for you, but a lot of times you go to places to do things and we just become so instinctively just trying to stay away from our uncomfortable feelings, we just automatically go and do the thing based on our fear. We don't want to even start addressing, like, why am I feeling uncomfortable? I don't want to go and sit and have a coffee by myself in front of all these people and feel like a loner sort of thing. Those sort of things you might do. Try and avoid, always want to take a friend with us. So we feel uncomfortable being seen by ourselves. It's going to bring up my true emotions that I feel alone and empty. I feel unwanted. We don't often want to challenge those sort of, just an example, those sort of things. So what are some of our reasons that we're afraid of change? Anybody? Somebody? <laughs> uh, right down the back there. And in the front there. Thank you. Kadira. Um, one of the main reasons is that we um, are afraid to... I've completely forgotten what I was going to say. <laughs> afraid of speaking in public? No. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'll pass it on to someone else. So what are the re I'll ask, Yeah, we'll go back to, to here. So the, what are our reasons that we're afraid to change? Why don't we want to change? I'm afraid of losing all the people who like me the so way I am. Do so you feel like you're going to be alienated by friends? Yeah, if you because, change? because the way I am now, people like me, and then mm -hmm. they will dislike me if I'm otherwise. All right, so losing friends, if you change? Friends or other. I don't know if that's ASBL stuff. Um, yes, and... Just leave your hands up too for the mic carriers to get to you. I'm Glenda. Um, it might actually feel worse. Than what you've already got, yeah? Yeah. And, yep. yeah, I'm Laura and I fear judgment of others. What was that one? I fear judgment. Judgment? Yeah. yeah. And Nick there, and we have one over here. Just uh, yeah, leave your hand up. Yeah. Might go with um, over here. So waiting for the mic. I've just got used to where I am, and so it's been okay. Why why rock the boat? So you don't want to change because their life already feels good. Well, it's not that it feels good. I've become used to addictions and everything so like familiarity, that. Familiarity. So it's, it's it? yeah, and it's like, well, the unknown. Scared of the unknown, yeah. is it that want to change because of the unknown? Yeah. yeah. And here we have Nick. Yeah, uh, fear of making a mistake. Yeah. I'll stop now. <laughs> we could go on forever. We could take this, this list all the way down to Sydney if we wanted to. But really, all these reasons we've come up with are just excuses. They're just justifications for avoiding our fear. Can we see that? It's just a way of trying to if I want to lose, lose my friends. I won't, I'm not picking on any of you. Um, thank, thanks for them, by the way, too. It's just a, a way to avoid, oh, I won't, if I lose my friends, and I'll just better stay the same, or I feel if people are going to judge me, even though people do, all these things happen anyway in our life. But they're just excuses for us trying to avoid this, this uncomfortable feeling right here. And it's always going to keep coming up, no matter what you do. It has to be removed emotionally. So these are all just end up being excuses and justification to avoid it. While we're ignoring it, we're going to keep going down that road all the time. It's just like putting all this in the pile, noticing it, putting it in the pile, and still going down that road anyway. 
because they're never ever dealing with these things. To deal with these things, we need to come to this intersection and make a choice. This choice is going to have to be in the way of truth. It's the only way they're going to ever go, those, those feelings. So, if they're not the real reasons, what are the real reasons? And that's what we're here to talk to you about today. So I'll just get rid of these. It's going to need some room, possibly. Oh, oops, should lift that bit up. And there are only really three reasons. And these are from God's perspective, by the way, too. If you want to go down this road towards God, that's the way God's designed for us. This is the way man's designed to deal with, get good feeling, or have uncomfortable feelings met. This path along here is the way God's designed. Let's write that back up there. So, reason number one is we have an emotional lack of faith is a reason why we're afraid to change. We have, a re- we have a lack of faith in God. So how does that look? How does it look in your life? Yes. Um, yeah. Just keep your hands up with the mic still, please. Yes. Yeah. My name's Miranda. Um, you know, like with the addictions, we get a little bit of um, comfort or pleasure and joy. And even though it's been promised or it's been said that, you know, if you trust God, it's going to be much bigger. You, I, I didn't want to let go of the little one because I'm not sure that I didn't have faith. But I don't why, believe why it in God, be Why wouldn't you have faith in God? There's a feeling, there's a reason. So what's the feeling that you don't have faith in God? Um, I just don't have, it's not, I just don't be, believe that things could be better than what I have. So you don't feel God is going to help you in the process of trying to resolve the Yeah, I don't believe in God. I mean, don't, don't yeah. believe that God can, you know, like. I mean, Simple as that, don't believe yeah, in God. Don't believe that God <laughs> yeah. can make it better for me. Yeah. yeah. Simple. Ange? Um, I was going to say, um, I don't trust God. Um, because I, I'm still trusting my earthly father. Yep, so hooked into family environments. Mm-hmm. Yep, and so believe they're real. Yep. Very true. Anybody else over here? Yes. Here. If, keep your hands up, guys. Keep them up when you need them. And one over here too. Pierre, I don't believe God um, loved me enough that it will be the best choice for me. You don't believe it would be? So you feel like a person would be a better choice? or No, I, I believe God does not love me enough that God's choice or the truth will be, he will take care of me if I choose a, the way of the truth. Mm, so you just don't feel God's going to love me, basically. Yeah. It's yeah. mm. very common. Yes. Um, Julie, Julie yeah. I don't trust myself. Uh-huh. So how can I possibly trust God? I don't have any self-trust. Very good. We'll get to that one, actually. Okay. I'll give you a couple answers I've got up here, too. So I'm afraid of God rather than trusting in God, often by religions and other stuff that's been brought up. And God's almost like an authority figure to us. And the, our lives have been brought up with parents being authority figures, teachers being authority figures, church leaders, whatever it might be, being authority figures. And we haven't felt loved in that process. A lot of it always been kept small, kept pushed down, don't want to have our, let our, have our feelings heard. There's a lot of damage that's happened in that childhood from, the, from our authority figures. They don't know what love is. So we don't have any faith. I believe God will punish me, just like I said before, by authority figures there. Eh? I believe that God doesn't really care about me, like you were saying before there, Pierre. Since I cannot see God, I cannot feel God. I only rely on interactions with others I see. So I'm relying when I'm going down this road, an uncomfortable feeling comes up, I want someone to come and give me a hug, get me out of it. I want someone to come and talk to about it. I want someone to just be there for me, just be there, that sort of feeling. Because we're so addicted to not feeling our fear, not feeling any feeling really in that way, we're never going to connect with God because God's going to be always a feeling interaction. So we're only not relying on that. We're shutting down to our feelings. We're not even going to go down that road at all. 
I'm used to getting my addictions met, and God doesn't meet any of my addictions. So I'm not going to have a relationship with God. I've got no faith in God, I've got faith in addictions. It's as simple as that. What's another reason? By definition of what love is, is very different than God's point of view of love. We believe this is love. This road of addictions is giving us our good feelings, and we call them love. The world calls some really interesting things love. <laughs> it's kind of weird. We need to sort of learn out, we need to learn what love is really like, to have at least one experience in your life to find out what this love is like. Because you can compare then. If you've not had one experience at least, you'll never know the difference. And when you know the difference, you know which road you want to take. And you'll start having some faith in God in that in that stage. So where else don't we have a lack of faith? Or where else do we have a lack of faith, I should say? In God's laws. So how do we feel about God's laws? Why don't we have faith in God's laws? Anybody? Yes? I'm Sandra. Um, I want to rebel against all of them. Yeah. That's what, how much, that's what we're doing. We're doing this. <laughs> yeah, when we're going into addictions, we're rebelling against them. They feel scary, I guess, because the laws of the parents were didn't feel so good, so I just assume that God's laws are the same, so I'd rather yeah. rebel. Yeah, it just feels like another authority figure, doesn't it? We don't have any faith in that that's going to bring us a good feeling, like a, a feeling that wants to nurture us and care about us. Yes, Marco, down the front here, Cecily? Just back down. <laughs> Marco, it's also very confronting in regards to learning divine truth from what I learnt being a Christian, and that's why I don't trust in God's truth, and that's where I'm finding finding it hard for me. So did you have some faith before? Oh, just in regards to the Christian, different belief systems oh, yeah, in yeah. regards to the laws, uh, the God's laws. Like now, understanding the truth about God's laws, it's very confronting to, to actually pursue them based mm. on intellectually knowledge from before. Yeah, even intellectually, you're not going to have faith in God's laws. Mm. It has to be something you'll experience to have faith. Faith is all about having an experience on facts so when we have that experience we'll find out for sure yeah, but at the moment we don't want to have that experience we keep on choosing a different direction so we're never going to end up having faith in God's laws yeah, I must go quick through a few of these answers too I don't believe God's laws of love govern the universe and the world I live in I don't believe that God's trying to lead me towards love I don't believe that God's going to help me with my emotion when this fear comes up in me and if I start wanting to access my fear I don't believe God's going to help me to get through that and to, to help me to get um, there's going to be a result really it's going to be better for me and the laws are all designed to help me get there designed to all of God's laws are very loving we don't believe that yet we don't have faith in it that they're loving so emotional lack of faith in God's laws that I don't believe God's laws will help me with my pain and suffering. I believe my addictions will help me with my pain and suffering. Whenever I have a headache, I'm going to go look for an aspirin pretty quickly. That's going to be my quick fix. I'm always looking for the quick fix. But in the end, we'll always end up down the end of the road, and that's exactly where it is, pain and suffering. If you haven't found out the cause of the problems. I believe that humans' laws define and govern my life. Even though we don't, we run a rebel against them, we still believe in them. I don't believe God's laws are there to assist my change, is what we were just talking about before. I don't, I don't even want to try and find out, just have a little experiment. Like we just did the experiment before, just to try and find a little uncomfortable feeling that might have been there. If we try this experiment in our life, whenever an uncomfortable feeling comes up, we'll find out that there is going to be a different result if we go right through with it, and we'll talk about that a little bit coming up. This road is always going to assist change. Always, 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 always. This road, never, never, never. So God's laws are constant and reliable. That's one thing that doesn't change. Isn't that awesome? You've got something that's rock solid in the whole world you can rely on. You can't rely on people, you can't rely on man's laws, you can't rely on so many things, but you can rely on God's laws. It's an awesome thing to grab hold of, to be able to have, to know that it can change, and it's going to be there always, always, and never changing. You can guarantee it's going to help you all the way, it'll pull you through. 
Hopefully one day you'll have some faith in that one. Yeah. So what's another reason? I like faith in myself, like Julie said before. It's a big thing, isn't it? We've been squashed often as a child and don't trust our own feelings, been told not to trust our own feelings, not, and then just being suppressed and oppressed. I don't believe I can cope with, li- with being a different... I don't believe I can cope with being different to the world. Someone said that before, I think. I don't know who it was when we were looking at reasons and things. And if I change, how am I going to cope in the world? What, I'm going to look different. I'm going to feel different. I'm going to be ostracised. I'm going to be quite different than everybody else. I don't feel I can cope with that. I do not believe that being different is safe. I want, I'm addicted to feeling safe. I just want to be safe, just don't want to be stretched, don't want to be pushed, don't, I just want to get in comfort zones, feeling good, all comfortable, controlled. Now what's going to happen next? I don't believe I can cope with all of my emotions and feelings. It's a big one, this one. We might go on to the next one. I'll come up with that so one in a minute, I haven't skipped it, so we'll get to it next. I do not believe I can grow, change, and become more loving or truthful without harming myself or others. Because we're so locked up in addictions, oftentimes we start to change and then people around us try and pull us back into what we used to give them through our addictions. We feel like they're telling us we're selfish, we're hurting them and all those sort of things. We get still in addiction with them, trying to fight through the addiction and they're just pulling us back into it. We feel like we're hurting them, getting manipulated. We've got to believe that that change with God is always a good thing. And people around us are not going to like that sometimes. They're all, we're already being dependent with each other people trying to get addictions from them and also give addictions to them so they can feel good from us. And we're going to feel that we're hurting people, but we're not we're, when we're choosing this path. We want the truth. So we just looked at those things. We looked at the lack of faith we had. as one thing that prevents our change. A second reason is an emotional belief that I cannot cope. An emotional reason is a soul-based reason that I cannot cope. I feel I cannot cope if I get going to change. I feel it's not going to be possible. I feel when, I'm being, when I become emotionally overwhelmed, what's going to happen? This is a big one for everyone. This is a big one for me coming back to this world and having to learn, relearn about God. So what are my beliefs about being overwhelmed emotionally? Does anybody like to share? Yes? Uh, hands up. <laughs> um, yeah. Lani, that it's never going to end, that I'm going to be stuck in yeah. that place forever. I often feel it's, it's just not going to end. It's going to be a pain. If we, just, if we start going this little path here and we make a choice to go over this way, towards truth, wanting to find out about the emotion, and it starts coming out because it doesn't feel good, does it? No. For the first time in our life, you want to actually feel how uncomfortable it does feel and start going to it. It feels like it's not going to stop. It's not gonna, I'm going to spend the rest of my life in pain. And that gives us, we're very, very afraid of that. And it's like not having the faith in God, like if, if I really go the whole way, God will take me. Yeah, right through. it comes back to our first part, doesn't yeah. it? We don't have the faith yeah. that if we allow ourselves to be from emotionally overwhelmed, which is yeah. we've already God's designed us to that to happen to help us with our change, because He knew the potentials of, of us going away from love, yeah. that's which just causes all the pain. He knew the potential of it. We're going to have to come back mm. to that. We're going to have to come back to that spot. We're going to have to deal with that pain. So God made our soul able to cope, but unfortunately, we don't have the faith yet. I think what's happened with me is I've gone just so far in the feeling and then it's got, I haven't engaged God yeah. to get right through. You haven't gone to emotional overwhelm, generally. Yeah. All the times, let it come up, let it come up, let it come up. Whoa. Run away. It might happen again, it might come up, it might come up, it might come up. Whoa. Almost there, but not there. It's a feeling, it's going it, to, it feels like a little bit scary. <laughs> I admit that myself. It feels like it's going to, um, a ramp up, ramp up, ramp up, ramp up, ramp up, and you've got to go, oh, it's just a yeah. top out, top out, no, yeah. top out. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's, it needs to get further than that. Once you let it keep going, going, and then you're over the top. Then you're into emotional overwhelm. And that's where the real help can start. 
that's when you're really starting to get in this track and God can actually have a relationship with you and help you with that feeling. You're not doing it by yourself at that stage, although we feel we are. Uh, we have one here. I feel like I'm going to die because in childhood no one was there for me and I don't believe God is going to be there. Yeah, it comes back once again to that mm. first reason, doesn't it? We just have a lack of faith that there's going to be assistance for us. We feel like we're going to be alone all the way through this. There's going to be no one to help us. Yeah. And we often feel like we're going to die. It gets that, that painful. Yeah. We have one up here. Yes. Uh, where are we going to? Where's in it? We'll go up the back there. Uh, my name's Daniel. I feel like I'm going to lose control. Yeah, that's a big it. one too. And so we've been so busy doing this life and so used to it, doing the walk, doing the walk, doing the walk. Oh, you're always in control. All of a sudden, we're just going to fall apart, and we're going to need to fall apart because what we've created here is a facade, which we'll talk about, I think, tomorrow. And the facade needs breaking down, needs falling apart to become like to start discovering the real hurt inside of ourselves. When we start to discover the real hurt inside of ourselves, we start to become closer to our real self. And God can help us. God wants us to find our real self. Um, Lorleen, um, I have a. Um My, my emotions and my fears are not really me, uh, but I believe that, so I don't want to know more. The, your emotions and feelings are not really what? Sorry, I just couldn't hear. Um, I think I'm not explaining myself. Um, I believe in my errors so much that I feel that if um, that if I find out more about them, that's more about who I am, but. The truth is it's not me, but I don't believe that. It's just the fears that I have. So is that, I think I'm, just let me know if I'm getting this wrong, but is, are you feeling like um, that when you start discovering some of your hurts, you start believing they are you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not you. They're just things that someone's put in you. That, yeah. that, that is me, and, and I can't get away from that, and that's what makes me afraid, that I find out that that's actually me. And, yeah. You know. That's pretty scary, isn't it? Yeah. Rather than letting yourself go right into the yeah. and finding out what it's really about, yeah, it becomes quite a scary thing. And if I start believing it, it's going to be real for me. And that's going to be who I really am. Yeah. Yeah. And you, it's just a horrible, horrible thought that someone's already put there beforehand, actually. Yeah. I'm, I've probably half done this already. It's a little exercise you can do by yourselves at home, too. So we might even just write a few of the words up. So if you have this sentence, if I, I feel I will, blah, 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 if I feel everything. So there's a feeling inserted in that little section there. I feel I will something. If I feel everything, if I start to feel all my emotions, what, what would you think that word would, might fit in there? It's probably just a single word, so it's just, it's just fake the mic. And cut it. Hello, I'm Mel. Um, I feel like I will die. Yes, good one. Let's write these up too. Cardi, where is she? There. Um, my name's Cardi. Just hold your mic up. Um, my name's Cardi. I feel I'll be totally alone. Alone, yes. Can everybody see my writing okay? Um, yes, right on the outside there, and nothing back. Hi, I'm Matt, and I feel like Just I'll hold a bit closer there. <laughs> I feel like I'll disappear. You're going to disappear? Yeah. And one more over Rita, is it somewhere? Just there. Yeah. Rita, I can't, I can't keep up with life and family if I feel everything. Can't keep up with. I can't keep up with my life or my work and oh, my yeah. family. It's gonna all fall apart. It's just all so, falls apart. Yeah. It's what just so that? stressful to hold it all together, and it will be more stressful if it falls apart. Yeah. 
Uh, you're, like, you're gonna fall apart. That's uh, pretty messy writing there. We've got some of the reasons here, we'll just keep moving along. So it feels like you might gonna die, someone's mentioned that already. It feels like we're gonna go crazy if we start going through these emotions. And that's what a lot of the time the world's told us when you start feeling stuff, you're gonna go crazy, don't go there. You're gonna go nuts, same sort of thing. You're gonna be stupid. You're gonna make a mockery of ourselves if we start feeling things emotionally all the time. Of course, we'll be away from people if we can be when we do that too. I feel like we're gonna make a mistake. Like it feels like if I'm gonna choose this path all of a sudden and I end up starting to feel everything, and I feel like I'm gonna go nuts. I feel like I'm gonna end up in an institution a lot of the times. We often feel that. We feel like it's gonna, if we go down this path, I'm gonna make the biggest mistake of my life because I know what this one does. I'm trusting it, even though it's making my life suck. But it's going to suck worse if I go down this way. It feels like you're going to make a big mistake if I start feeling everything, and especially when we start being when we're addicted to all of our life already, all the other things we're still trying to get away, like trying to resolve. Or like when we're starting off, we're still hooked into a lot of addictions, and we start just working on one thing. We're going to feel like we're going to lose all of those things. If we lose all of those things, where am I? I'm going to have to lose all of those things that were making me safe. So it feels like I'm going to make a big mistake if I start to feel everything and be emotionally overwhelmed by it. It's a very courageous choice and it's a good choice, by the way, too, to do it. And another, yeah, another one there, fall apart, it's good. There's another one too, it's not going to feel like there's anything better. Like I feel like the world's what I've got now, it's okay, it's quasi okay. You know, it's not bad, not good, but I don't want it to be worse. I don't mind if it gets better, but I don't want it to be worse. And oftentimes we start feeling, in the, feeling our difficult emotions. It's going to feel worse for a moment. It's going to feel uncomfortable. And we're so, so addicted to set, having this nice little comfort zone set up around all these different emotions we've got. Now we're going to have to try and feel uncomfortable? Are you crazy? <laughs> it's like that feeling, isn't it? You don't want to... like. I've spent my whole life creating these comfort zones and now I'm going to let them all go up, fall apart. It's like we feel like, no way. I don't want to do that. That's going to be so painful. So I don't want to feel everything is the answer. So we end up coming back to a bit I don't believe I can cope. I just feel like I just, I don't want to feel everything. I only want to feel the good feelings. Yes? Intellectually, I know this is not the case, but I feel if I really let go, then I'll be taken over by spirits or somebody else who wants to. I feel vulnerable. Like I'm going to be taken over rather than feel my own stuff. That's one we could have put on our list before. Like we're afraid. Like it's another one of our excuses or reasons. A lot of times, like if you're honest and sincere with feeling what you're feeling, you're going to be protected. You're going to be the most protected. In this system here, you're the least protected. You're easily manipulated in this. I understand that, but I have had cases where I've started and then I've just felt like this is not my emotion, what, where's it coming from? Um, and I felt like my soul was just being sucked out of me. Mm. So there would be another feeling also yeah. in that, what, do you know that, what that other feeling was? Just afraid to sort of feel everything, I suppose. What? Sorry. When somebody's doing something to you, it's not you, Hmm. It's happening to you, and it's not a good feeling. What's going on? Well, I'm letting, must have been, uh, I'm allowing that. I must be allowing that. There's a fear inside you that allows it, but you've been manipulated a lot. Yeah. And so if you let yourself feel the fear of manipulation, it would help you a lot more. Thank you. That's okay. Oh, I already did that one. I could. I feel I need to prevent myself from experiencing things emotionally. That's what happens when we don't want to f allow ourselves to go into emotional overwhelm. We start shutting ourselves down. If you don't want to feel the uncomfortable feelings, it also blocks us off equally to not feeling all the joyful feelings that we could experience as well. So we end up having pretty much a life that's a little bit like this. 
flat out. Or what's the word? There's a better line for that. Flat out sounds like you're busy. Um, flat lining, almost. Almost a living dead when we're in that comfort zone. It's, not, it's almost, almost not existing, not even involving ourselves in life and all the experiences we could have, good and uncomfortable. But as we start dealing with the uncomfortable ones, the more joyful ones are going to be higher. I mean, you're going to have more of them. But unless we allow ourselves to be emotionally overwhelmed and get to that point, let, get to that point where change can really happen, then prospects aren't so good. So. Pauline? Uh, I'm not sure if this is a version of it, but um, a disappointment um, in that when I find out what I've done with my life, how much I've let it all go and I don't know if this is self-punishment, but disappointment with just what could be and what I have allowed it to be. You have an addiction of self-punishment. You yes. do this a lot with yourself. Yes. Yeah. You've got to start making a different choice here yeah. when you start finding yourself doing that all the time. I've had a lot of trouble with that myself. Yeah. Had to catch myself out all the time. And I still have trouble with that yeah. too. Yeah. And it's where you're going to be the manipulator the most by spirits as well. Yeah. They want you to stay down. They like punishing you and having a laugh about it as well. I've felt them laughing at me many times. Yeah. That's when I realised, wow, I know what's going on there. I can start, I start recognising the feeling of when I start getting into that and feel the attack coming on me and the laughing at me. I realise I'm just letting it happen. Yeah. And, and before when you were saying about... Um, always wanting to feel good that's why we have addictions mm -hmm. but the opposite is often the case with me I want to feel bad because that's my addiction to feeling yeah, bad just what I was saying then yeah. yeah you're addicted to feeling like punishing yourself yeah, yeah you've got to stop that one hey yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to help you at all so I'll just go on to here we've got so what are my choices and decisions do I make to prevent my feelings and emotions so what sort of things do I do was well, one of them <laughs> yeah. oops whatever that noise was so what I'll just read that again. What choices and decisions do I make to prevent my feelings and emotions? So what do I do when start, the feeling starts coming up and starts ramping up, start ramping up? What do I do? Yes. And I'll look in the front. Go for distractions. Yep, definitely. Yep, start letting it come up a little bit down this way. It's like going off into a little bit of little bit of painful feelings. I almost go whew, back under distractions again. I want to get it right out of the way again. Get quite scared, don't we? Yeah. I'm Allah. I forgot to say it the first time. I just explain it all to me in my head. Intellectually, I just yeah make a I story just, up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and I think that I'm done then. And just try and justify it all the way. No, I just like I describe what I should be feeling. Hold your mic up a little bit higher there. I, I just describe what I should be feeling and it, oh, yeah. like making up for real. So should be feeling. Oh, I actually are feeling. So it's yeah. I just, like I just describe what I found out about the feeling. So yes, I should be feeling that, mm -hmm. or I feel that. Mm. But it's just a it's just a thought. Yeah. You need to feel it, but you're telling yourself a lie there, what I should feel, rather than what am I actually feeling. Rather than feeling it. Yeah, feeling the first one that comes up, rather than trying to explain it away with another reason. Yeah. That's a good one. It happens a lot too. I might just go right next door here. Hi, I'm Renee. Um, what I generally do is go out of my body. Yep, that um, happens a lot too. I used to be pretty good at that one too. Yeah, uh, just when you were saying before to Lorleen that you need to stop that addiction with her self-punishment and criticism, how do you, like I've been sitting up here, you know, and feeling quite uncomfortable and going out of my body and then trying to talk to God like, yes, I'm really scared and I really don't want to feel it and... That's where it's not going to help you. Because if you're coming to, like, I'm really scared, it's just an intellectual, I'm, this is what's going on, but you need to start feeling the feeling of the fear. That's what you're afraid of. Because nothing can change. We're back in this diagram here. Nothing can change and we're not willing to feel that fear. We start feeling the fear. We start coming to the truth of what's going on inside of ourselves. And you just want to run away from it generally. Yeah. yeah. So you want to run this direction? Yeah. It's not going to help you. Yeah. So then I'm just... Because I've got so much 
addiction and it's so comfortable, mm. I really... You believe in it. It's going to be better for you to go that way. Yeah, I That's okay. Like, it's, it's, not, it's good to know that's what's going on, to be truthful. Like, if you're just truthful for yourself about that feeling, you're closer to getting this way. If you're just honest about, I like my addictions, like, that's the first thing you're going to have to come to. Don't judge yourself for it. It wasn't you that even put them there in the first place. When you come into this world, there's a world already designed around that system and it got enforced on you. And that's how you coped in the world at the very, very beginning. But now you've, you're going to learn some new things and you can change that. You can help yourself now. Before you couldn't help yourself, you're running little and very dependent on others. But now you can be dependent on yourself and ask God for some help with this as well. So change is possible for you. It's just going to depend on how you use your will in this area for some new things. So we're cracking on again. Cracking, not cracking. Um, I, I think we just did some of those. Cut that. I only engage in life when it doesn't challenge me. We often do this too, don't we? Just look for things that are not going to upset our emotions too much, not be um, uncomfortable comfortable feelings. Like picking jobs that we know that we're not going to get, have to do too much. You know, we just got to go there and go back home, just get my, get my money. I'm not the one that's going to challenge me in my own, bully, um, my own feelings in that job. I'll get on to the next one. So we end up creating comfort zones in the end. Just like we talked about before. You just end up in this circular thing, just going round and round. Nothing really changes. There's no real growth happening. So we'll go to reason number three. So we've covered two things already. We've covered that I don't have faith and I'm not willing to, to, to go into emotional overwhelm with my feelings that do come up. These are the things that prevent me from changing so far. A third one is resistance to God's truth. So what are my resistances to hearing God's truth? Anybody? How am I resistive to hearing? Hearing, God doesn't speak to us, it's via a feeling. So how am I resistive to accepting God's truth via a feeling? Yes? I don't want to feel shame. Don't want to feel? Shame. Shame, yeah, that's one big feeling that stops us. Yep. In a way. <laughs> Uh, Justin? Still an excuse, by the way, too, Shane. Uh, Justin, um, God's truth is different to mine. Yeah, we want to hold on to our own truth. Yeah. To it's like it's getting me by already so far in life. I don't want to try and use the other guy's stuff. So we don't trust it. That's my. I'm just running short of time, so I'll keep moving on. Or is this God's messenger of truth, the law of attraction? So how do we feel about the law of attraction? It should be a, yeah, but I feel like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I often feel like God's law of attraction is the creator of our pain, don't we? So things come along in our life, and now we know that God's actually got laws that make things come along. Well, we not his laws, it's because of something inside of ourselves that's attracting it, but we want to blame God for it. Yet it's our soul that's creating the the, the events to come to us are via the law of attraction. But God's trying to show us the pain that's already inside of ourselves. Otherwise, it wouldn't affect us if something come along. It's an indicator. It's trying to teach us. God's trying to teach us that something inside of ourselves that needs fixing up, needs addressing. I resist accepting what happens to me is the effect of a deeper cause within me. So I resist knowing what God's trying to teach me that there's some, what's happening to me now is an effect something deeper that inside of me that happened to me way back was a cause involved in it I'm just dealing with the effects all the time I just want to try and run away from the effects so I'm never going to find out what the cause is I need to know that that's the truth there is, a, there, is a, there is an end God's trying to get us to the end of that pain God's trying to teach us and lead us to the cause of it I don't want my internal pain and suffering exposed by God's truth so I don't want to hear which is just like the law of attraction. I don't want to even know what's going on with the law of attraction. Just, as long as it's good, it's all good. If it's bad, don't want to know about it. God wants me, me to be constantly changing. Everything in the universe that God's created constantly changes. Even our body has changed since we grew up, since we were small. 
yet the emotions inside of ourselves haven't got much past the age of it's got stuck in us. This is what this process is about. It's about trying to go back and fix up the things that happened to us, like fix up the pain where the pain started and let it, let it, let it continue, like let it come up, let it, let it happen, let the feelings be exposed for once, let, it, let the child inside of us grieve that's been stuck for so long, then it can grow and catch up to the rest of us. So we have resist, emotional resistance to God's truth in another area, which is God's, we, don't have, we have resistance to God's truth entering my heart and my soul. I refuse to experience or feel any emotional error, so it cannot leave me. So while we're in this system, it's based on error. Everything's error in this system. Because none of it's the truth about how you can become, or have, this is all about getting good feelings. This is the way you get the good feelings. But while those, the real ones at last, that is, over here, but while we're on this system, it's a system full of error. And while we believe in the error and want to hold on to the error, it's just turning it back to God, basically. The sort of truth that God has available to us cannot enter us. It's like a bottle of water, if you like, a vessel that's so full of muddy, icky fluid. And God's, God's trying to put some beautiful, crystal clear, purified water in there, but needs some of the error, the muddy water, tipped out to let some of God's purified, beautiful water to come in. In this process, we make this choice to want to deal with some of our pain that's starting to tip out a little bit of that mucky, icky water. Then the truth can enter our soul. It opens up the door for that. Well, my emotional area exists. It keeps the truth from entering our soul. I'm refusing to feel the painful emotions within me, which causes all that too. It doesn't, once, if, whenever I'm shutting down, resistive, I'm not allowing any God, God's help to be available to me every time. That's what we're trying to get to show you about the resistance, how it's stopping you from progressing, stopping you having a relationship with God. We'd like you to have a relationship with God. We've experienced it, and it's beautiful. We'd love for you to have that experience as well. So my last one. I think it's my last one. So the resistance to God's truth Emotional, what are we talking here? A resistance to living in truth with others in the world. We have a lot of emotions around this one, huh? So these are some of the feelings why we resist being in truth with others in the world. So I feel like I'm afraid of feeling emotions associated with being humiliated, with being disowned, feeling unwanted, if I speak up in truth, feeling criticised, if I be honest. Of feeling alone, of feeling ostracized, or feeling condescended to, rejected, all those sort of feelings are the ones we're trying to avoid. We're not living in truth with others in the world. This is why we're so resistive to God's truth. Because when we start having some of God's truth enter our soul via God's love, we'll feel different. We won't want to live this way anymore. And as we're going through the period of change, we're going to, people are going to make it, oh, we're not going to feel that, but um, we're going to be quite different in the world and there's going to be resistance towards us. And we're going to feel alone a lot of the times. You might feel unwanted. But as you start developing, having more faith in God, you, you realise I'm not alone and I feel okay with what I'm doing. I feel good inside myself now. I actually feel proud that I stood up and honoured my own feelings. I've never done that before in my life. And you start having faith that you can do this process and you are helped in this process. So, notice again, the reasons for resistance is emotional. It's the emotions that are creating this whole system. The emotions you don't want to feel that create your life. They create the pain in your life, I should say. They also create good things if you want to feel them. There's a different track you can go down and have a different result, which I just rubbed it off, joy and happiness <laughs> and growth. So in conclusion, what we've learned today, my reasons for being afraid of change are lack of faith. I don't believe I can cope emotionally. I've been emotionally overwhelmed. And I have emotional resistance to God's truth. So hopefully you've taken some of that in today. It'd be awesome. We've got some homework for you guys too, so get your pens handy.
Actually, just I'll just flick all through these. What am I going to do in my daily life to improve my faith? What are my emotional beliefs that cause me to accept that I cannot cope with being emotionally overwhelmed? And just practice this week, letting myself be overwhelmed with emotions. Just experiment with it. Try it. Just let them come up naturally. Just don't resist them. And just see what happens. I'll leave that up on the board for you as we do a little changeover. Thanks, guys.